Hey, welcome to part four. We will look at some more questions today. The previous parts are in the cloud kernel or cloud ninja members area. You can access it. So in this question, you are trying to compile IIS web application that runs Docker. Okay, and they are saying that first let us use default built agent pool. So when should we use default agent pool? Is see this is a versatile pool. That means Windows, Linux, Mac OS, anything will work from an operating system perspective. Why? Where it is suitable? Why should we use it? See, if you are running an application which is a cross-platform application, that means it is not only relying on Windows-specific features. It can be anything, Linux plus Mac OS plus Windows, then you can use it. And if you are unsure of specific requirements, you are not clearly, uh, totally sure whether you will be on Windows only or you will be on mac os here with iis web application we know clearly that we want windows that is clear so why will we use a bigger thing which works with cross platform so we know windows we have to use so we will not use default build agent pool so that is why our answer here no adjustment required is wrong because adjustment is required now now what should we use the hosted mac os not required because IIS is a Windows application. It is not for Mac OS. And now between hosted and Windows container, see this is a Windows uh, Windows application. So uh, apply common sense. We want to keep it very much Windows specific. So hosted Windows container pool. So this guy, what it does is it provides pre-configured Windows containers specifically for windows application like IIS so we have IIS we know clearly now that this is specific to windows application and when we should use it why it is suitable where in which scenarios it is suitable first is if it requires windows environment so we know it is requiring windows environment because IIS is there and if you want a more optimized streamlined build process for your dockerized IIS application so is our IS application dockerized? Yes, it is. It runs Docker. So in most cases, if your application is designed for IIS on Windows and you want to leverage Docker for packaging, then use Windows Container Pool. This is a recommended option. Why? Because it provides faster and more efficient build process tailored for your specific needs. So since in this case, our these two uh, scenarios hold good because we are totally Windows specific libraries dependent and this will not work on linux or mac os it will not work and it will give performance optimization because it is dockerized is application that is hosted on container pool so option b hosted con windows container is our answer in this case your company has devops environment and that can be accessed through active directory so this is your devops environment and this is your active directory all active directory users should be able to access this now you are instructed to make sure DevOps environment can only be accessed from devices connected. So you have these mobile devices, these small, small mobile devices are there. Okay. Only these should be connected, but these mobile devices cannot be any Tom, Dick and Harry's device. It should be connected to on-premises network. If you are connected to on-premises network of the company, then only you should be able to access this. If you assign devices to a security group, so the purpose of assigning to a group is that in one shot uh, all devices can be managed because they are in a group like applying some applications that can be done uh, installing applications or conditional access you can leverage ad conditional access policy to enforce stricter so or you can so in this case uh, you, you can still do conditional access but uh, grouping devices helps you track your device inventory and understand distribution of different device types in your organization. So this may not be totally correct because uh, just for adding this kind of requirement where only from company you can access, you your security group can do a portion of the job but not fully. And GPO is not correct in this case. And if you try to configure security in project settings in DevOps, so this will be like security checks within the airport terminal. But in conditional access security check, it is at a considered as an airport entrance. 
so it applies to all passengers trying to enter but if you use security devops security settings they define specific project areas where this access to, based on clearance uh, security clearance is required so option c is very granular like specific and option d is uh, high level like overall at the airport gate itself it, it is applicable so our answer is configure conditional access uh, in azure directory see conditional access is a very powerful tool of active directory it acts as an intelligent gatekeeper it, so it is a gatekeeper outside your airport itself not inside and, and as a concept conditional access policies they operate on a if then logic you define the conditions like user group location device type and etc so there you can say okay if the device type is connected so, so this on premises network then only i will allow it and if a user signing attempt meets defined conditions then only access will be provided and multi-factor authentication will be activated there so mfa means they will be asked hey guys provide one more uh, secret, secret code that has been given to your mobile app the benefits is it gives you a lot of security because mfa is inbuilt and granular control is like you, you can you can choose where what you want to define you can tailor it you can do it at the airport gate you can do it at the security check-in you can do it where you buy uh, duty free goods and etc or you can do it at mcdonald's pizza etc whichever is there in the airport and this is a zero trust implementation that means conditional access policy aligns with zero trust security model where trust is never resumed it's zero trust <clears throat> everything will be validated so everything will be verified so this will be our final answer option d where we try to configure conditional access in azure directive uh, active directory so this is our next question you are trying to make azure devops configure pipelines to for, for a project named this so you are configuring uh, devops to configure pipelines <coughs> you are preparing to use a version control system and where does the source code decide the source code should reside in a managed windows server located on a company network now these are the options given non i mean actually none of these options would fit the bill because uh, they will all put it on the cloud for example, if you see GitHub Enterprise, Bitbucket Cloud, or GitHub Professional, these are all cloud-based hosting platforms. They will provide secure and scalable storage of your code base, but it resides on their servers, not your servers. Okay, that is that is what it comes with. And if you see Git in Azure Repos, DevOps offers on-premises deployment options. Azure Repos itself is a cloud-based service within DevOps. Even in the on-premises scenario, the code technically resides on the managed server, but the core Git functionality is managed by DevOps. So in, in this case, it resides on your managed server. So technically what uh, it means is like when I try to search the web and etc. What it means is that if you want to store it in a managed Windows server on your company network, then these two options you should use. Either you use a self-hosted Git server. So that means you install and configure the self-hosted Git server uh, like GitLab and etc. on your Windows server. On your, it will not be on cloud. It will be on your Windows server. Okay, and this gives you full control of the code base in the server environment. Everything is in your server. You manage the server, you manage the backups and etc. Or you can use a bare Git repository. You can set up a bare Git repository on your Windows server. Okay, this stores the Git history and metadata, not the actual code files. So, but uh, so these are the two options we should use. But I see uh, places in the web people have tried to answer it using GitHub Enterprise. So there are some more questions. In the members area, Cloud Kernel or Cloud Ninja members can access it. This brings us to the end of part 4. See you in the next part.